Hello everyone, this is Mark Rugen, Managing Director of SA International, the makers of Flexi. I'd like to go over some interesting information here about true shape nesting. Uh, sometimes we have a project like this and maybe we want multiple copies or maybe we have a bunch of different images and we just want to nest them together to use the least amount of material but still get uh, uh, maybe extra copies or something like that. So let's start with a simple example here and I'm going to use raster images. This works for vectors or rasters. In this case, um, let me just show you a couple of things here. In the Arrange menu, I'm going to do a Step and Repeat. And you can see that this is just barely fitting. It's a little bit past the uh, defined area of my media here. I'm just defining this one, the media size, as um, 54 by 72 inches for this example. But it could be any size you want. And if I go in here and want to add a contour cut to this, I want to show you something. If I go to my effects menu and say contour cut, see how it's a rectangle? It's a rectangle because there's white bitmap in the way there. So when you have graphics that have like a pretty solid background, uh, you can come right in here and on your bitmap editing tools, you can go to the make transparent tool, click on the white background and just execute that. And then when you add your contour cut, you'll see it's actually the shape of the graphic right there. So that's just a little quick tip for you, okay? Now let's go back in here again and let's show you that um, uh, step and repeat and I'll execute it. And this time you'll see, you can see how just above the top up here, there's just a little bit of um, excess, right? I can't really fit all of these on here. But what if I flip these bottles over and maybe put the the head of the bottle or the, the, the top right there, maybe down in here somewhere. I think they would all fit and it would be great. So step and repeat doesn't really help me in this case. That's when true shape nesting can come in. Let's grab our bottle here. Let's go to arrange and we're going to choose true shape nesting. And what that means is use the shape of the objects to nest them together. So let's take that and my uh, options basically are define the size or the area that you want to apply uh, this to. You can tell it how many copies you want. Let's go with 10, okay, just to start with. And let's go with uh, a pretty large amount here. So in other words, we can rotate these 90 degrees, okay? Just what you can do is uh, turn off, break uh, into groups, okay? Turn off use holes if you don't want to use the holes and just hit redraw. And you can see how it kind of flips them around like that. So when you're using this uh, step angle here, this is actually allowing the nesting routine to figure out how many steps would you like to use. And I've, I've added, I've told it, you can rotate this 90 degrees at a time if you want. So it figured out and it gives you a preview and you can see I can fit nine of them in there easily. Now if I switch this to 10 degrees and hit redraw, it's going to calculate that, and it looks like at 10 degrees, I can get them all in there. So you can see just rotating it a little bit now allowed me to put all of the graphics in there. I can click OK, and now I can actually send that job to my printer. Now, that was an example of using step and repeat, and you can just go in there, select it, go to the Arrange menu, use uh, the... I'm sorry, it wasn't step and repeat, it's true shape nesting. Go in there and select and then try to uh, true shape nesting and you can change the angles a little bit until you get the best approach to this. Now I have another file in here that just has multiple copies of images and I'm going to take each one of those and again I'm going to actually add a contour cut to each of them and I'm putting about a 0.2 inch contour cut and I'm doing each one individually because I want each one of them to have a contour cut. Now watch this image right here. I'm going to actually go to effects and contour cut and you'll see that the contour cut is actually following the image. So I know that image has a transparent background. Just apply it and it'll apply that contour cut to it. Now if you want to know if it has a back transparent background, you can just click on an image, go to this uh, last tab over here, or excuse me, third tab, and it'll actually say remove transparency. So I know that has a transparent uh, background on it. So I can go to my contour cut on here and apply that. Good. Same thing on this one, no problem. Effects, contour cut. This is a little tip for you for doing contour cuts, right? When I have images like this one, I want to make sure, this is vector artwork. If I don't want to break it apart, I need to make sure that it's grouped together. So I'll, I'll actually select that 
and then I'll make sure that uh, I combine that by grouping it together. Okay, so let's just make sure it's grouped together. I'm going to do contour cut on that, and we're going to include the hole so it does the inside, no problem. I'll do another one on this one. Easy enough. And now this is a little touch here. If you click on this, you notice it doesn't say in that third tab transparent background. So I know that if I apply my contour cut to this, it's going to just be a rectangle. So just a little tip there to find, find that out. Remember what we did on the last project. Just select that white area there and apply the transparency, right? And if you don't have your bitmap menu up here, just go to bitmap and you can actually do make transparent. Same thing, okay? So I've got a transparency on there now. If I go to the third tab, you can see it's there, and that means I can add my contour cut easily to that. Okay, so that was just a little tip on managing your files. Now, if I select all those files and I go to Arrange, I'm going to use True Shape Nesting because I want to actually make two copies of what I see on the screen here. So again, if you look at your uh, Design Central, it gives you all the options. I'm going to say I want two copies. Uh, let's just say we want to allow it to rotate by 10 degrees like we did last time. I'm not going to break apart text or group. That will keep this object down here on the bottom together as one piece. If I turn that on, it's going to separate all those pieces, and I don't want to do that. And I'm not going to use holes because there's nothing. I, if I did turn on use holes, it would actually use the inside of my graphic in here if I wanted to. If something was small enough to fit in there, it would actually print on the inside of that. But I don't want to do that. So let's just hit redraw. I've got, again, the size of the area. I have in here the uh, graphic that says put 0.2 inches between each one of them. It looks like they're all going to fit. I got the preview. Just go ahead and execute that and then it will actually create the graphic for me and there you go. Now you see these in here, it, it, they look like they've been distorted. That sometimes happens with a uh, imported file like a PNG or something like that, but I can assure you that's perfectly fine. In fact, if you click on it, you can actually see the shape right here. Uh, and if you were to pick it up and move it, you can actually see that it's it's actually just perfectly fine. I'm 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 good on that. So even if you see that, you're you're probably just fine. You can just move it around if you need to, or even just click on it and you know use your little arrow key here to kind of put it in between each piece. Very easy to do. Okay, so everything's good there. Now, if we want to, we can actually send this out to print. All you've got to do is click on your uh, rip and print here. You'll see that it transfers right over. Okay, everything looks good. We're going to select, in this case, our HP 800. Uh, if we want to take a look at this, we can go to the very bottom down here and just say, I want to see the entire drawing. There it is. Maybe we want to put that in the center of our media. This happens to be a 64-inch wide uh, printer, so we're just going to center it up to make sure we have plenty of room. You could even lift it up a little bit if you want. Put it wherever you want. The point is you're using the least amount of material here. And if I had to, I could go back and redefine that media in Flexi as 64 inches or 62 inches or whatever the actual width is of my media here. Maybe I could get another copy in. So that is that, those are some of the options there. Again, all we did was we selected our graphics. Let me undo this. It's undoing one at a time here, right? That's kind of nice, right? So I'm just undoing it. There's my originals. I added my contours on there. I selected it. It's under the Arrange menu. It's called True Shape Nesting. These are the parameters in Design Central. Just choose your rotation amount. And remember, if you just, you know, what you're choosing in here for degrees is what you're allowing it, step it in that number of steps, right? Use, if I hit break apart, it's going to break my groups apart. I don't want to do that. If I use use holes, it's going to use the insides if something's small enough. Um, and again, for text, sometimes you just want to keep the text together. You don't want individual letters, so don't break apart the text, right? And you can always hit redraw here, and it'll show you what it does. Let's do two copies again and redraw. And you can see here I'm just rotating at 90 degrees in this case. So it still fits. Let's just click OK on that. And there it is. So maybe we want to keep everything in 90 degrees or something like that. I kind of like that a little bit better. So True Shape Nesting, a very powerful tool, and it is part of the software that's running your printer right now. This is Mark Rugen, Managing Director of SA International, the makers of Flexi. Thank you for watching.